Okay, I've said it before and I'll say it again that trigonometry is extremely practical. It is very useful for solving problems in the real world. So we're going to go through a whole lot of examples here that involve using sine and cosine to solve problems. And we'll start off with some basic right triangle problems that are pretty straightforward, but we'll also do some practical applications, including some examples involving navigation, which is a specific area where angles often show up. And we'll see problems that deal with sine and cosine, and also the tangent, and also inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent. And here's the first example. Given two sides of a right triangle, find the third side and all the angles. Well, it's a right triangle, so the Pythagorean theorem applies. And if you know two sides, you can find the third with the Pythagorean theorem. So let's do that first. We know that, that this squared plus this squared is 11.4 squared. So let's write that. And this side is just x. So I'll write x squared plus 7.15 squared is equal to 11.4 squared. So solving that for x, I'm going to take the 7.15 squared and put it over here. And then square root, x will be the square root of 11.4 squared minus 7.15 squared. Just doing the algebra to get from there to there. And then that you can do on the calculator. You can just type all that in in one step if your calculator can do that or break it up into steps. But you get 8.88 for x. So I'm going to write that over here on the diagram also. And then we're also told to find all the angles. Well, we know this angle is 90 degrees, so nothing to find there. But we can find alpha and beta. Here's alpha. We'll do that first. Now look at alpha. Uh, we know all three sides now. But just in case we made a mistake in this calculation, I'm going to use this side and this side to find alpha. When I look at angle alpha, this side is the side adjacent to alpha, and this side is the hypotenuse. And so when I have the adjacent and the hypotenuse, uh, what trig function comes to mind there with the adjacent and the hypotenuse? Well, the cosine comes to mind. I know that the cosine of alpha will have to be the adjacent, 7.15, divided by the hypotenuse, 11.4. So alpha, therefore, will be the inverse cosine of that. The inverse cosine of 7.15 over 11.4. And that I do in one step on the calculator, and it gives me 51.2 degrees. Now I could do something similar to find beta. I could say the sine of beta is this over this. But it's going to be a lot easier just to subtract. I know that if this is a right triangle, that these two angles have to add up to 90. Alpha and beta add up to 90. So beta is going to be 90 minus alpha. And alpha is 51.2. And so we do that, and we get 38.8 degrees. So those are the three answers. We found the third side, and now we know all the angles. Okay, this next one is pretty straightforward also. We're, we're given a right triangle, right angle right there, and we're told to find alpha and beta, these two angles. Well, let's uh, start with alpha, and look what we know. Here's angle alpha. I know the side opposite, opposite alpha is 14, and I know the side adjacent to alpha is 11. And when I have opposite and adjacent, what comes to mind is the tangent function. The tangent of alpha is the opposite, that's 14, over the adjacent, which is 11. So the tangent of alpha is 14 over 11. So alpha is the inverse tangent of 14 over 11. And on the calculator, that comes out to 52 degrees. So then beta, down here, beta has to be 90 minus that. 90 minus 52 is 38, and that's 38 degrees.